Hey everybody, we are just back from Thunder Hill. Now this was the first of two races that we we're doing at Thunder Hill this year. Now the second one is gonna be the traditional five mile that everybody does, great long track. This one, we used the original three mile, we did it the original way on Saturday, and on Sunday, reverse. Reverse on the three mile is fantastic because when you're going over that giant rise in the middle of the track, if you get it wrong, you land in Chico 40 miles away. It was awesome. So yeah, that was an interesting twist for folks who've been running Thunder Hill for a long time. Another, maybe more important twist is the fact that longtime track manager and noted PA system enthusiast, David Vaden. And uh, by the ice wall, it's still there. And uh, you know, we actually did go to town to see what they had, and they don't have any either. So it's a zero sum game. He has retired, but fear not, we brought our own replacement. Now, let's talk about the product and the Thunder Hill store. We have microscopes, laboratory quality. Okay, yawn. Here are your class winners. Uh, you mad bro dominated in their E36 Class A. Hit and Run Racing and their bone stock 1.6 liter Mazda Miata took class B. This was a top 10 finish, not their first top 10 in a stock 1.6 Miata, which I think argues for two things. One, get a Miata if you don't have one already. And two, once you got it, don't f with it. Class C was Ran Wen Park and their big block El Camino SS. Now, at first, Cyber was walking away with Class C and everybody was all up in arms like, it is an outrage that a 1980 Ford Ranger with plywood made to look like a Cyber Truck. That is not a Class C car. Well, then the oil cap popped off the Ranger motor. The car totally caught on fire, basically burned to the ground. So, so much for the Cyber Corey's team with the El Camino, well, they inherited the lead and they deserved it because you know what? They did a say anything theme and they were in it full out from Friday to the end of the day. Sunday, they had the John Cusack guy, they had the big boom box. If you're gonna win Class C, this is how you do it. Yeah, you know, I had totally forgotten that John Cusack has an old ass El Camino in that famous scene. And I just wanna take a minute to appreciate the movie magic of convincing audiences that a stalker in a sketchy El Camino is romantic. Aww. Hell a sweet story about you, Mad Bro. Not the E36 that won, but their second car, which is an Ecotech swap old BMW sedan. They had the distinction of having their drive shaft fall out like literally on the first lap, which both kind of destroyed the car and speared a drive shaft into the track. But I digress. The important thing about this was one of the kids on the Nada Miata mini team from Sierra College decided, hey, I like welding. I'm just going to go all through the paddock and weld stuff. And she helped them get their car back together and back on track. Her name was Erica Snow. She did a great job all week. There were a few Lemons cars at this race that we had seen before that showed up here with a new team. One of those was the We Stink Audi, used to be the Curious George Audi, got rethemed with the cheese theme. We saw the return of the old STD themed S10 pickup truck. Uh, the new team's called Life with Micah, and they decided not to be STD. I don't know why. There were a couple cars we hadn't seen in years, if not decades, returning to Lemons with new teams, starting with the first gen Maxima of the spy who drove me to Lemons. And this 84 Escort wagon being driven by almost ready racing. They weren't. <laughs> we're not ready. There were also a couple of returning teams who came back with a new spin on their previous Lemons efforts, such as Wankel Chicken in their Jetta. Last fall at the Ridge, this Jetta was a last minute replacement for their chicken-themed Mazda RX-7, which hella butt did not run. So they were back this time, still in the Jetta, but with the chicken pit theme from the movie Stroker Ace. That was on the RX-7, they applied it to the Jetta, now the whole thing is complete, and they still have one small nod to the RX-7 and its Wankel engine. Hell, a sweet 50-plus veterans tired iron came back with an all-new theme based on the little-known Warner Brothers cartoon series, Real Racers. An obvious returning team was the Vannonball. I say obvious because, as you know, Team Captain Zack is attempting to do every single race on the 24 Lemons schedule in his Dodge Caravan. He showed up to Thunder Hill with an all-new rock and roll groupie theme. They kept that up all weekend. And I gotta say, that's two new themes in the first two races of 2024. And we have 10-year veteran teams that still don't have a good theme. You're on notice. At the last Sonoma race, the Hasselhoffs came back after a fairly long break 
with their Paseo, and they had this lame-ass Knight Rider theme, and we made fun of it. You need to do more than just painting the car black and having a little red thing on the front. Well, they took that to heart, they stepped up, and they came back with an unfair disadvantage theme based on Smokey Eunuch. Who knew there was so much cheat room in a Paseo? Another team that got called out in the Sonoma wrap-up video was Back in the Saddle Racing. They showed up at Sonoma with incomplete registration, incomplete gear, and incomplete car. All of that was sorted for Thunderhill. Granted, still a Volkswagen, some issues on track, but we think they're finally going in the right direction. Speaking of issues, Anton Lovett was back with his Volvo 544. Now this is his second Volvo 544, I would point out, because his first Volvo 544 got hauled all the way to Road America last year and was total. So Thunderhill was race number two for Volvo 544, number two for Anton, and for this race, the car had some new stuff, including a completely new induction system with four motorcycle carbs on a custom intake, and more importantly, a totally sweet sun visor. But the team was battling fueling and overheating issues all weekend until the temp gauge absolutely pegged itself. I mean, it got to the top of the gauge, which was like 300 degrees, then it kept going all the way around until it hit the peg at zero. So that was bad, and I suggested to Anton, well, you know, if it's back to zero, I mean, you just start over, right? You're good again. He didn't think that was funny at all. Well, he got a pressure tester, and he pumped the whole system up, and he finally figured out that the gooseneck coming out of the Volvo block and this part probably dates back to the Truman administration, had a big crack in it and water was shooting out of it and that's why the car was overheating. So Anton wasn't gonna be able to find a replacement part and he was ready to pack up and go home until Erica Snow, the Sierra College welder showed up and offered to try to repair this water neck. Cast iron is tricky to weld, but Erica patiently worked on it until the crack was sealed and the cooling system once again had pressure. Filled it up with water, it seemed no worse for wear from its adventure around the temperature gauge, and the team was able to finish the race. As for Erica's actual car, which was, again, the Sierra College Nada Miata Mini, well, there were a whole bunch of minis. There was Sunday Fun Day, there was Almost Average Motorsports, there was the Anti-Pesto SWAT Team, there was one more, Flavor Town, that's right. Well. All of them pretty much were just blown up all weekend long. Weirdly, except for Flavortown. And, and was there anything different about that entry? Another gang of similar cars was formed by the Retro Racers, Team Benjin, and Knight Rider, who all brought fifth gen Toyota Celicas. It wasn't a perfect weekend for the Celica gang, but it's all relative. What else? A uh, hell of sweet junk propulsion laboratory and their 5 series, they had the full pirate ship suspension. And then there was this team with the excellent name, Royal Canadian Morning Wood Endurance Racers. They naturally had prepared a musical performance for us. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. I cut down trees, I wear high heels, suspenders and a rod. Also hella sweet now, I gotta say, Barber, in the previous race, some dudes showed up in a new Open GT. Oh, okay, that never happens. Well, it happened again here. Now these guys showed up, and before you say, why you ruined classic and or $500 my ass, let me just say, these guys, they work at a haunted house, Corbett's House of Horrors, and they were looking for a hearse. Well, surprise, surprise, the guy who's selling a hearse, he's got a ton of weird ass cars buried into dirt. And one of them is an Opal GT, and they say, well, I don't see our hearse here, but we're gonna go racing with the Opal GT. They pulled it out, they fiberglass and who knows, voila. Oh, and it turns out, you know what? They did finally find the hearse, and they're thinking about racing that too. Hello, sweet, the People's Republic of Racing. You might remember them from doing car yoga before and the Honda Meetup. So they did something new this time. They developed an AI car analyzer. You just point your laptop at the car and look what happens. What we have here is a classic example of automotive irony, a vintage Honda CRX. This little gem from the 80s could have spent its days trotting to farmer's markets or being lovingly waxed within an inch of its life at a nostalgia car meet. Of course, automating this is a little concerning to the judges. That's stealing our job. Well, one of our favorite teams is this 77 Pontiac Trans Am sponsored by the Pure Life Cannabis Dispensary. They were back with yet another variation on their theme. This time they were Dare. Drunk ass 
and reefer enthusiasts. Fun story, one of the drivers on this team was Rich. He was an arrive and drive. We have all these tools on Facebook and on our website for matching people who want to join teams with teams who want drivers, right? Well, Rich said, I want to do that. He raced at New Hampshire with another team, straight up team. And he said, well, I want to try something different. So he landed on this team. He arrived, he put his bag down and they made it. I said, okay, you're playing the drunk ass in the boxing match between the reefer enthusiasts and the drunk ass. It's time for tech, go. Representing drunk ass all around the nation. Put your hands together for Keith Stowe. Yeah! And the D.A.R.E. team did not stop at the boxing match. They also provided the judges with a DUI checkpoint. Okay. Uh, oh, you're pregnant. Speaking of penalties, we had a good crew here. We had Judge Chris, Judge Jeff, and Judge Tom, and they were all dispensing justice with a vengeance. And we had some classic penalties, including the Bart Simpson. We had the jigsaw puzzle, which was easier for this team because some random spectator we've never seen said, oh, let me help, I'll do that. Admittedly made harder because we don't think all the pieces are actually in the box. Then there was a new penalty, the Swifty penalty, where the judges took a team that looked kind of real racery. This one, the Marty Not Racing in a V8 swap Porsche 944, they had to retheme their car as Taylor Swift Superfans. And we had the return of the recorder penalty where the whole team has to play a song on a recorder and until the judge can recognize what it is, they can't leave the pits. This time it was the um, General Motors unnamed sports car of an indeterminate color playing for um, the trademark performer often wearing purple. to the awards. Organizer's choice went to the team themed after that purple clad pop star. Of course, we're talking about Prince and the new powertrain generation. This team has been working the Prince theme for a while. They used to be called Prince and the Revolutions Per Minute, and they keep adding different flavors and elements of Prince along the way, including this guy from the very specific Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. In addition to the Prince outfits and the Prince music, they brought a new penalty. Can you beat Prince at basketball? Is anyone up for a game of basketball? They brought the hoop, they brought the ball, and of course they brought Prince, and Prince turned out to be pretty damn good at basketball. They never judge a book by his cover. This cat could ball. Except for the part where he landed wrong and possibly tore a hamstring. Sorry, Prince. <laughs> Judge's choice went to the incredible 1959 Pontiac Bonneville of full metal jacket. This car has been around for a while. Lemons fans know it as both the most rustiest and most awesomest 59 Bonneville in Lemons. And despite how this car looks and sounds, it had had some difficulty finishing a Lemons race, but they did that here. Maybe it was the first time they've done that. And for that, they got the judge's choice. The special award was the New Dynasty and Electric Vehicle Excellence Trophy, and this went to the 2018 Bolt. Team Electric Turtle brought this car, and they are the first ones to admit it is not a $500 car. They don't care. The guy running this team, he's a former Tesla engineer, and to him, this is just a science experiment. It's a science experiment! What can you do? What does it take? He's trying to figure it out, and I think he figured it out. Now, if you're the kind of guy who likes to go on the internet and rant and rave about EVs and how terrible they are and all that for a million dumb reasons, yeah, fine. Let me just tell you, this thing, it beat like minis, it beat Miatas, it beat BMWs, it beat turbo V8 American muscle cars. On the other hand, if you're one of those tofu and grass spirulina eating EV enthusiasts who's living in a yurt with like a 12 volt solar cell, let me also say it lost to the Bonneville. Yeah, shockingly, we're not resolving any internet shouting matches with what we're doing here, but we will say this was, in fact, a very interesting exercise. The charging, which is probably the most discussed issue when it comes to EVs and lemons, was solved in this case by leaving the track, exiting the property, driving 10 minutes down the road to Walmart. They had a fast charger, and while the car was charging, the drivers took care of shopping, lunch, the basics. 
Was this slower than refueling a gas car? Yeah. Was it faster than figuring out why the f your carburetor doesn't work right? Also, yeah. And most importantly, Electric Turtle, they shattered the existing Lemons EV record if anybody's paying attention. They were like five times more miles than anybody else has achieved so far. Now everybody else had their own brilliantly conceived, homemade, executed engineering exercises. And these guys brought a used 2018 Chevrolet Bolt with air conditioning and airplay, both of which they used during the race, by the way. I think that explains how to do it. Halloween meets gasoline, thousand bucks for the best theme, went to Sunday Fun Day, one of our mini teams. They were celebrating the first birthday of their future driver, Sierra. Now they're racing a Mini Cooper, so they spend a lot of time in the paddock. That's okay, because in that paddock, they set up a complete birthday party game arena. It was open to the public for the whole weekend, for the Saturday night party. They dragged some of those games over to the potluck. They had Twister, they had Giant Connect 4, they had Carnival Prizes. They had the whole bit. It was well-deserving of the HMG. The eBay Motors Heroic Fix Trophy went to the aforementioned or not little red Corvette of not sponsored bot. These guys are from Salt Lake City. They towed this thing behind their hoopty 40 year old junker RV. They got two miles from the track after coming all the way from Utah and the RV completely exploded. Can I ask you what happened to your motorhome engine? Big boom or a little boom? It was a big boom. Now they hatched this crazy scheme. They were gonna race the Corvette, then they were gonna take the small block after the race and move it into the RV and tow everything back home. Well, I, you can guess how well that was gonna work. Yeah, and in the meantime, they were racing the Corvette and crashing the Corvette. At one point, they bent the front suspension. They were able to fix that by welding floor jack handles into the suspension as reinforcing pieces. And because of their driving, or maybe just the Corvette with jack handle handling, it sucked. So they spent a lot of time in the penalty box where they got to know Judge Jeff Gates, who owns the Driven Garage fabrication shop in Hayward. Yeah, and so Jeff has a lot of small blocks lying around. He said, hey, don't worry about that Corvette motor. Just go drive a few hours, pick one up from my shop. It'll be fine. So now it's during the race. Somebody's just returned with a small block. Their Corvette is still out crashing on the track. Now they got to figure out how to get this small block into their hoop DRV. Who should show up to help and consult welding gear in hand? Erica Snow. With all that going on and all of them with their fingers in the pie, they figured it out. They got the Junker small block into the Junker RV. Problem solved. <laughs> Amazingly, they took off right after the race, 12 hours later, safely back in Salt Lake. Heroic. I got screwed, had some parallels to the heroic fix, with Team Lowball spending much of the weekend wrenching on both their race car and their tow vehicle. It's just that Lowball had less overall success. Team Lowball is an interesting bunch. They were all high school buddies in California. They all wound up spreading out across America. The core of this team is actually a bunch of very successful AMC racers, that's something you don't hear very often, based in the Gulf region. One of their old buddies is still based in California, so all of the Texas dudes came to Thunder Hill to race an all new non-AMC product, a 76 Ford Pinto. This was not just any 76 Ford Pinto, but a turbo swapped 76 Ford Pinto, or at least it was until that turbo motor blew up in practice. Then they swapped the motor twice, finally finding a running replacement at a junkyard. Returning from that junkyard trip, their tow vehicle started spraying diesel fuel all over the engine compartment, so they also had to fix that. Once they got their Pinto kinda running, they had to go beg another tech because they missed Friday tech because what, their Pinto wasn't running. And when they went to tech, well, their roll cage wouldn't pass. Huh. Now, if only there was someone walking around the paddock who was offering free welding services. Yeah, you guessed it, there was Erica, ready and willing to help the team. She was inside the Pinto welding for hours while the team put the final details on the engine swap and tow vehicle repairs. Finally, everything got buttoned up. They got a handful of laps on track before the end. Tow vehicle was running. They were able to go home. They got screwed, but it was a heroic effort. And that just takes us to the index of effluency, the very top prize in lemons. Now, traditionally, this goes to the team that accomplishes the most with the least. It surprises us with how much they do and the heart that they show. Usually it's a Pinto or it's a Thunderbird or it's a Studebaker. Well, this time, it was Erica Snow. Look, the IOE is about performance and heart. It is not about speed. And between the welding and the helping and just the general 
caring and trying to do good stuff, she crushed it. She spent the whole weekend literally walking the paddock looking for teams to help. Yeah, and we've been told by Lemons racers who have raced in Sirius or Pro Series that helping other teams is not something that's normal in racing. We're happy to say that it's fairly normal in Lemons, but Erica really took that idea to the next level. She's a solo person, doesn't know anybody. She's introducing herself to strangers, figuring out a way to help them throughout the entire weekend. That's just a vibe that racing doesn't have, and thanks to people like Erica, we have it in Lemons. One final note, we just learned Erica, she doesn't actually have her own welder. She was borrowing all of this stuff. So if you have a good rig lying around in the shop that you don't need, put it in the comments. We will make sure that she gets it. And that is Lemons in a Nutshell, as is also this. Every second you don't subscribe or watch one of these videos, another Vega is sent to the crusher. Won't you help us save Classic?